Hi, my name is Ed. Um, I'm an independent video game developer. Hi, I'm Renee Blair. I'm a game designer at Bosky Productions. My name is Danny Day. I am a game designer from Cape Town, South Africa. Hey, uh, I'm Tucker Abbott from Seattle, Washington, USA. My name is Evan Greenwood. I come from Cape Town, South Africa. My name is uh, Mate Navarro. I'm originally from Czech Republic. And I've come to uh, do a game jam in Thailand. Pirate Jam is the idea that we take six developers from around the world, bring them to Thailand, put them aboard two sailboats, sail them around, let them swim, let them explore Thailand, and at the same time give them space to develop game concepts. This is where we're going to meet the guys for the first time and we're just going to give them a little intro into the whole concept of Pirate Jam and talk them through what we're going to do over the next few days. As you can see, this is a rather beautiful, kind of sort of traditional Chinese style building. Um, we're up on the first floor, surrounded by some rather tasty looking oil paintings, the theme of which is food. And then also the video aspect of it, combine that together and see if we can't create a different way of making the games and then also marketing, exposing people to them. So um, there's a lot of interesting crossover going on here, obviously, between the sailing sport and the vlogging and the game making and the, you know, um, whether or not this works, I have no idea. So you're, you're in on a grand experiment. Um, if it does work, great, then maybe it's something that happens every year or several times per year. Um, you know, Liz and Jamie are down for that, I'm down for that. Game jams are the thing we do. It's a way we find good game ideas. It's an environment I think is very conducive to creativity, to making awesome stuff. And coming to Thailand was like obviously an awesome opportunity. And like, you know, frankly, also getting a chance to you know do something alongside American McGee was very exciting. I heard about it and just thought that sounds awesome. I want to be on a boat. I want to make games. Game jams often have themes and ours is no difference. We chose the idea of impermanence for our theme and so the game developers uh, had to build games around that concept. That theme was chosen partly because life aboard a sailboat teaches you pretty quickly that things are impermanent. They don't last forever. Here up on deck are two able seamen yeah. who are preparing for the race. Thank you. <laughs> Chef's busy in the galley. Do you understand what we're doing today? Do you know what uh, your positions yep. are on the boat? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna just sit here and like kind of watch what you guys are doing, bark some orders that you won't understand, and um, yeah, I'm gonna make sure we beat American or help in the in the cause. Exactly the kind of attitude we want on this boat. Okay, it's so our first day of sailing on Pirate Jam, and uh, we've got a good point of wind actually. We're cruising along quite nicely. Started at just gone eight, we were supposed to start at eight, uh, as agreed yesterday with American. But what we did say was we would talk on the radio first before we left. Uh, he cheated actually, he decided to get his anchor up, get his sails out, going. sail past us and then radio through and say hey come on guys what's going on? So I'm happy to report that after half an hour we're catching him up. If this were a longer sail would overtake him. He knows that, we know that uh, but um, you know, it's his show so we've got to let him win.
Renee, what's your take on the current situation? It's all right. I'm a little sweaty. <laughs> I was thinking more about the race. Where, where are we at with the race? <laughs> it's all right. I'm a little sweaty. <laughs> Ed, what just happened there? Um, well, we had a small disaster with the sail. Uh, wind changed direction rapidly. And take a look at this. We have a giant rip somewhere. Somewhere here. I don't know where it is. But yeah, sail screwed. But we won the race, that's the important thing. Yeah. There's no point in living if you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were down below, you were talking to American and we, we, we were doing, the wind was doing this. So basically we were going nowhere between zero and two knots of wind. Suddenly we had, we picked up to a massive five knots of wind and the boat healed about that much, a little bit, but it was enough to tip the mizzen, um, what do you call it? The, uh, what do you call it? The mizzen staysail over the edge so i asked ed to try and bring it in it was a little bit too late it was already in the water and i shrieked at you and you came up and we've yes. broken the sail because i was in the middle of talking to american who's just uh, conceded the race and uh let's just uh let's just get a confirmation of that we'll go and talk to him on the radio now well yeah i just think if we put the motors on now then we can get to shore for lunch and um you know anchors down and get everybody ashore for lunch so that, that was a thought so just to confirm, that's uh, synchronicity conceding the race? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we said that already. <laughs> yes! Okay, Team Esper, we win. <laughs> Winners! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. So I've never been to a game jam before um, and when I heard about this I didn't really think it was real like doing a game jam on a desert island in Thailand it seemed uh, seemed a little bit uh, ridiculous but it you know I signed up for it for what the hell something might come of it and um, yeah when it came through it was uh, that I'd been accepted I thought all oh, right okay so maybe this is actually happening but even you know as I arrived here I was still thinking like I don't know this person you know I, I've never met them before maybe this is just some whole scam and it's actually not real but uh, as soon as I met the other people I was like oh this this seems fine it's actually happening um, but it's it's been really cool so far um, it's very interesting to go to a completely different place and be sat on a beach whilst programming a game it's uh, quite an interesting experience I've done a few previous game jams mostly the weekend long sort of things like global game jam um, and I've also worked in a variety of group sizes uh, ranging from seven people to just myself uh, the way this particular game jam is a little different is uh, it's longer um, we're in a exotic location and um, it's not competitive it's more of a cooperative but individual kind of thing so we're each working on our own projects but since it's not competitive we're more inclined to help each other and lend advice and look at each other's work so this is I think my first time really sailing and uh, staying on a boat for sure um, and it's great I slept like a baby despite the rocking that's probably actually what helped me sleep uh, that, which was nice um, yeah it's it's great different uh, very different to um, staying on land for sure uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun um, and uh, I felt very welcome hopefully I've learned a little bit I uh, won't remember the name of all of the lines but I might know some of them we are hoisting up Esper's house flag here as you can see over there American is flying his pirate flag so we have to combat that with our beautiful flag over here and uh, I think we know the outcome's gonna be today so that's hoist hoist away Well, it's a typical sail up and down land. Uh, this is quite normal. You get these catabatic effects which come over the mountains. 
So you get these gusts and you get these lulls and gusts and lulls. Of course, typically what happened was we turned the engines on, put half the sails away and the wind picked up again. So we're having a really good sail at the moment. Very enjoyable. Typically as well, flat calm seas with this nice easterly. So it's an offshore breeze and uh, yeah, it's all good. We've said goodbye to Renee and Matei. They've been with us for the last few days, but we're doing a little bit of a swap round. They've gone over to Synchronicity to stay on American's boat for the last three nights. And we've got the lovely Evan and Tuck coming to join us. Jamie's just gone to pick them up. Welcome, welcome. 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 I'm enjoying living on a boat a lot more than I expected to. Uh, it, it's been pretty easy sleeping. I kind of like the rocking actually. And uh, me and another one of the contestants have been working in the cabin and actually not getting seasick so that's a nice plus uh, a couple extra work hours there and working on a boat uh and, and sailing in itself has been a lot of fun i think one of the the, the strangest or like the most surreal parts of living on a boat was that every day when we come to shore it's a little bit like invading the land from the sea we're on a boat we get to do what we want and I think it's a, yeah, there's, there's a kind of, there's a freedom to it that I really appreciate. The sense of freedom is, is, is great and the surroundings couldn't be more spectacular. It's Wednesday morning and we've left Koh Lanta now. We're on our way to Koh Phu, going to the southern spot of Koh Phu. It's going to be very different to the last place. Two sides believing that they're all alone While most of the people are just trying to get home Two sides believing that they're all alone While most of the people are just trying to get along This is the third and final location of Pirate Jam. Final if you don't include uh, Krabby Boat Lagoon, which is where we're going to end up. And this island is the one that American and I affectionately called the Secret Island uh, in one of our blogs last year, which actually upset a couple of our viewers. They said, why aren't you telling us where this island is? Well, we did actually, we did mention it. It's Koh Jum, also known as Koh Phu, and we are on the southern tip and uh, we found the Freedom Huts or the Freedom Bar Restaurant Resort. It's a rather pretty little area and we decided to come here because they could accommodate us under a waterproof hut but very close to the water and it's a rather special little place so I think we're going to do a little bit of exploring whilst the guys continue to do their jamming. Pirate Jam is really different because of the way that the work is sort of staggered. Um, because we go onto the boats and we do other activities and we're sort of running around and there's this awesome stuff to look at, uh, you sort of end up not really spending your entire time sitting in front of a computer for this long stretch which is how most game jams work. You have you start, you have 48 hours, you end, you have to have something at the end of that time. Um, and those 48 hours are usually contiguous. So if you go sleep, that's at a cost of your development time. Here, we get to sleep as much as we can on a rocking boat. Um, and you also get time to think about what you're working on. So you sort of get to do all your to-do lists, which then get destroyed when you get back to work. Uh, and you get to really focus on what you want to achieve with your game in terms of how it's designed and how it's going to work out. So, I mean, I've I filled a lot more paper than I usually would at a game jam, uh, at Pirate Jam. And I've also done a lot more snorkeling than I would usually do at a game jam. In <laughs> fact, if I don't snorkel at least once a day, I feel like I'm wasting the opportunity to come to Thailand. Uh, so I try and get as much swimming in as I can, uh, which is not a normal thing for game jams that I've been to. And it's, uh, it's really fun. I am telling what I know And I am singing what I see Two sides believing that they're all alone While most of the people just trying to get home Two 
suicides believing that they're all alone While most of the people just trying to get home It's a beautiful morning and it's the last full day of Pirate Jam so uh, we've got an early start because we have to get up into Krabby Boat Lagoon Marina on a rising tide. So that means that we have to leave here at 8 o'clock in the morning. So um, we're just going to do a bit of stowing. Liz is going to very kindly cook up some omelettes and then we're going to be ready to go. Now it looks like there's a little bit of wind, not too much. Maybe that we're motoring for the first bit, which is no bad thing actually because the guys have been uh, on their laptops pretty much all night and uh, this morning as well so they'll want to plug in which means that we can run the inverter without a problem with power so I'm just gonna have a coffee and then uh, we wave goodbye to Kojum the secret island and uh, head north <laughs> knots of wind and Esper's hit what's the highest 7.8 7.9 sailing all the way um, everybody's just getting on with their jobs some people are relaxing some people working and the rest of us are just sailing and enjoying a lovely day <laughs> It is the last day of Pirate Jam. We've just finished having a look at all of the awesome games that were made by our pirates over the last week. And so now Jamie and I are gonna go quickly through the games that we saw and talk a little bit about what we really liked in each. Yeah, just just as a just to say generally, really, really impressed with all of them. And for me personally, I'm amazed at how we've come up with six very, very different games. And they've all been really engaging. And playing them truly involved in every single one of them. So that alone is impressive. And also the fact that you've taken the theme of impermanence as well and run with that. Um, we can see that in each of the games. So it's good that you've all stuck with that theme. So that's really good. I have to say this last hour has been really good fun. Yeah, it's been awesome. Really good fun. Just yeah. to see the different gameplay mechanics, the different art styles, the, the sound of the music, uh, the, the theme being applied to the games in such an amazing way across so many different genres, it's really been very impressive. I think, at least with technology and software and game making, especially, um, that living on a boat would be pretty workable in that when you're an indie developer or like a startup or something and have a really, really small team, either just you or like a handful of friends, um, you're often in a co-working space or you like go to coffee shops just to be around other people and you know, not to get bored or antsy or to find some inspiration. So the way we did it was kind of like, in a way, structurally the same as the boat is like you're at home and then docking is like you're going to a co-working space or a coffee shop and it might even be like an even better and more inspiring situation in that you're going to be around new people and new places and things like that and you'll have like an actual like like always an influx of new interesting ideas and people and things um yeah i'll definitely keep yeah, it interesting yeah. um i think one just one concern is always the wi-fi and the power <laughs> but like you say if you're going onto land that's generally when you find it or you can always just get like a sim that seems to be the best yeah. option uh people were saying that the the wi-fi uh, or the signal uh was actually better than in uh back home yeah i was a little impressed that like my phone was uh, very reliably receiving texts and we're just like out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, so that's a definite solution. Yeah. Um, and if you're just running off the power on the boat, then it would be great. I would love to do it. Um, if, I, uh, if I could just get a boat, that's step one. <laughs> 